Hello, my name is Katrina Rettman and today I'm practicing with Mira Hoffman. We get a lot of questions from beginners about how to become more flexible. So today we're going to focus on a practice that's wonderful for beginners to hone in on that flexibility, but I'll tell you right now, the secret to becoming more flexible through your yoga practice is to practice frequently. If you can, make it a goal to practice three times a week. We'll keep this video short, around 20 minutes, so you can follow along with us three times a week and see what that does for your flexibility, your mobility, and your health and happiness overall. We'll get started from a comfortable seated position. Mira and I both have, well, I've got crossed legs. Mira is stacking her shins, which can actually be really comfortable. Try both out, see what your hips like. We can place a blanket or a towel underneath our hips to bring them higher than our knees. And we'll try to find a nice tall spine, lifting up from the sternum and the crown of the head. We'll relax shoulder blades down the back. From here, we'll find the breath. Just noticing how we're already breathing without changing that in any way. Just watching the inhales and the exhales. You might notice if you're breathing more into the chest, maybe your breathing is a little bit quick. And we'll try to slow it down and bring the breath all the way into the belly. We'll inhale into the belly first and then the chest and the upper back. Then we'll exhale completely. Inhale into the belly, then the chest, and exhale. We'll take three more breaths just like this. Slow, smooth breathing. One more inhale. Maybe we hold to the top and exhale we'll start to bring some gentle motions into the body we can move the nose around in a clockwise circle we can start small and gradually open up to find our full range of motion really using the weight of our head here to direct this movement and pausing, if we feel any places that are tight, we can really use this as a time to undo tension in the neck and the shoulders. We'll circle once more in this direction. Checking in with the body, staying with that breath. We'll inhale, tall spine. Exhale, relax the shoulders down the back. And start to circle the opposite way. Nose in the air, counterclockwise. Getting a nice stretch here. Allowing ourselves to tune in to this moment, into our bodies, letting go of any thoughts about earlier in our day or our week. I'm really choosing to spend these next few minutes just honoring ourselves and our bodies and working forward on this path towards flexibility and more comfortable mobility one more circle in this direction we'll inhale tall and exhale completely relax the shoulders keep the collarbones broad We'll start to take this movement down to the rest of the body circling the sternum forward over the left knee and then the right will keep a nice long spine, long neck. With an exhale, we can round the back, tucking chin to chest. Inhale, bringing the body forward, being nice and gentle here. Only moving to a point where it feels good and comfortable. Mira and I have both been practicing for quite some time. I've been practicing for almost 10 years now. So the range of motion that we demonstrate that's comfortable in our bodies is something everyone can work up to, but don't expect it on your first day. That's definitely not how it was for me. One more circle in this direction. And let's inhale tall. Exhale, shoulders down the back, broad collarbones. And inhale, we're gonna take the sternum towards the right knee. Sweeping over to the left with our exhales, we're gonna round the back, chin to chest. 
Again, just taking this time to feel into the body, release any tension, noting, noticing the places where it feels really good and maybe places where we're feeling kind of stiff. And as you practice this three times a week, you'll notice that'll change every time. We're always feeling a little different in our bodies. Inhale tall, exhale. From here, we're gonna move to hands and knees on our mats. We'll take the wrists under the shoulders, the knees under the hips, and really important here, keep the neck long, which will be gazing on the ground in front of you. We'll keep the fingers spread wide, pressing our weights down into the ground through the hands. With an inhale, we're gonna tip the tailbone back, drop the belly and lift the chin. Exhale, tuck the tailbone under, rounding the spine, gazing up at the navel. Again, inhale, tailbone tips, belly drops, chin lifts. Exhale, tuck the tailbone, rounding the back, gazing at the spine. Notice the hands, do we still have firm pressure in the hands? Inhale, tailbone tips, belly drops, chin lifts. Exhale, tuck the tail, round the spine, gaze at the navel. We'll take an inhale to come back to neutral. And staying right here, we're just gonna think about lengthening all the way from the tailbone through the crown of the head, a full breath in. Feel the lungs expand and exhale. From here, we'll tuck the toes. We're gonna press into the hands and the feet and lift the hips to find our downward facing dog. We can bend the knees deeply here. We might even step them wider than our mat. Take a nice deep bend in the knees to feel a stretch through the shoulders, through the back. Get that tailbone high. And take another inhale here. And an exhale. We're gonna step the feet back to a hip width apart whenever you're ready. And we'll try to ground that left heel towards the mat while we bend the right knee. We'll straighten the right leg, bringing that right heel towards the ground as we bend the left knee. Keeping the neck in line with the spine, we're gonna keep pedaling the legs, bending one knee than the other. Feeling a nice stretch through the hamstrings, this is a great way to increase our flexibility. Moving gently here, not forcing anything. And if we're new to yoga, being inverted for this long might start to feel like a lot of pressure in the hands. So we're gonna take one more to each side. And we'll start to walk the feet up towards the hands until we can find a forward fold. Feet are hip distance apart, we're gonna relax the crown of the head towards the ground, relax the jaw, let the arms hang. We can even take hold of opposite elbows. We'll take a nice deep bend in the knees. I know there's always a lot of pressure to be able to touch the toes, but truly what matters is releasing tension in the spine and gently warming up the back of the legs. We might play around with starting to straighten the knees. Find a place that's comfortable and be ready to bend them again whenever you need to. We'll go ahead and release the weight of the arms. Press into the feet and start to roll the body up to stand. We're gonna stack one vertebrae at a time Lifting the head last. And we'll drop the shoulders, palms facing the front of the room. We'll find Tadasana here, mountain pose. With an inhale, we'll sweep the arms overhead. We can take the gaze up to look at the hands, shoulders away from the ears. With an exhale, we'll reach out through the fingertips, swan dive down to a forward fold, stretching forward with the crown of the head, back with the tailbone. Relax the crown of the head to the ground, relax the jaw. Inhale, press into the feet, let the arms hang heavy as we roll the body up to stand. Inhale, sweep the arms overhead. Exhale, swan dive. Keeping a nice long spine here. As we get to the bottom, we can allow a nice bend of the knees. Let the crown of the head reach for the ground. Inhale, press into the feet as we roll the body back upright. Exhale, shoulders down, palms face the front of the room. Inhale, sweep the arms up. 
exhale, swan dive. Bending the knees, crown of the head reaches for the ground. Inhale, press into the feet, roll the body up to stand, getting some blood flowing through. Maybe we're moving a little easier already. Exhale, shoulders down the back, palms face the front of the room. We'll take a nice full inhale and exhale completely. Then we'll inhale, arms up. Exhale, swan dive. This time we'll inhale, palms to the shins, finding a flat back, reaching through the crown of the head. And exhale to fold. We're gonna take the right leg back and drop that right knee. Now, uh, Mira, will you hand me a towel, please? I have sensitive knees, so I really like to cushion them with a blanket or a towel, just a little bit more than my yoga mat here. And if you have a more advanced practice, you're always welcome to go ahead and straighten this back leg for a high lunge. From here, we can lift the chest and take hands to hips. We're gonna to wanna to take a look at this front leg, make sure that the knee is over the ankle. And if the knee is behind, I'm sorry, if the ankle is behind the knee, we can just walk the toes a little farther forward so we can get this 90 degree angle. Hands on hips, we're gonna to start to maybe close the eyes, return to our breath, and start to sink here into the hips. Breathing deeply. Finding a nice stretch here. One more inhale. And an exhale, we can lower hands to the ground. We might take both hands to the inside, feeling a little bit of a shift in our stretch. We'll take two more breaths. This might be pretty intense at first. Over time, we'll really watch the body open up. Check in with the shoulders, make sure they're not up by the ears. We can relax them down the back. We'll take one more inhale. And with this exhale, we're gonna straighten our front leg, walking hands a little closer to our bodies. We're gonna lift up tall and lower the sternum in the direction of the knee, keeping the neck in line with the spine. Keeping the breath steady, we've got a nice stretch going on here through the backs of the legs. Again, this might not be the most comfortable pose at first, but it'll really help with overall flexibility as you continue to practice. One more inhale. And an exhale, check in with those shoulders, make sure they're away from the ears. We'll place hands on the ground in front of us for a little support as we step this left foot behind us, dropping both knees. With wrists under the shoulders, we're gonna find a nice plank pose here with the knees dropped. If you're more advanced in your practice, you can always tuck the toes and lift the hips for a higher plank. Otherwise, we're gonna find a nice long line from the crown of the head all the way to the knees, pressing through the hands, low belly sucks in. An inhale here. And an exhale, we're gonna press the ground away, bend the elbows back behind us as we lower the chest towards the ground. From here, we'll rest the chest on the ground, press the tops of the feet and the pelvis into the floor. We're gonna lift the hands up by the shoulders and use the back muscles to lift the chest for a baby cobra. Exhale, we'll lower down, hands meet the mat. We're gonna press into the hands and scoot onto our knees. Keeping the arms long in front of us, we can bring the forehead towards the mat, hips over heels for a child's pose. If we put any weight through the palms, we can help to keep stretching open the shoulders. Two breaths. Inhale, we'll come forward to our tabletop position. We'll tuck the toes, lift the hips, Find our downward facing dog. We'll pedal one leg and then the other. Once more to each side. And we'll step the feet up towards the hands. Find that forward fold. We'll bend the knees. We'll relax the crown of the head towards the ground. Relax the jaw. 
Inhale, press into the feet to straighten the legs and start to roll the body up to stand. Palms face the front of the room, shoulders down the back. We'll inhale, arms up. Exhale, swan dive. Relax the crown of the head. We're going to inhale, bring the palms to shins. And exhale, fold. Planting both hands, we'll step the left foot back, dropping that back knee for our low lunge. We can lift the torso, place the hands on the hips. Set up our ankle so it's 90 degrees underneath the knee. Maybe we close the eyes and start to really focus on our breathing here. Focusing on any tension we're feeling in the body, we can relax the jaw, relax the shoulders, relax the hips. We might feel a little work going on with our balance here, and that's perfectly normal. Let's take one more inhale. And an exhale. We'll lower our hands to the inside of the right foot, just shifting the stretch a little bit. Finding new ways here to respond to any tension. Taking our time to relax. As I mentioned, Mira and I have been practicing for quite some time, so you might find it helpful to place a stack of books or a block underneath your hands. Whatever makes your stretch a little more accessible is always a good thing. Next stays in long with the spine. We don't hang the head, we don't crank it up. Always lengthening. One more inhale. And using this exhale, we're gonna push the body back straighten the front leg. Again, we might have blocks or books beside us. Mira and I just have our fingertips on the ground. Flexing toes towards the face, we lower the sternum in the direction of the knee, keeping a nice flat spine as best we can. This one gets a little intense, so keep the breath steady. We can always pull back to be a little gentler in the pose, waiting for the body to soften. We'll take one more inhale here. And an exhale. We're gonna step that right foot back to meet the left. Sinking the hips back over the heels for our child's pose. Forehead meets the mat. We can keep a little pressure in the hands to stretch the shoulders. And start to walk the palms a little closer to our bodies, keeping a nice bend in the elbows. And once upright, we'll bring the feet out to our to one side, circle them in front of us. Then we're gonna bring the soles of the feet together, knees out wide. I like to use my hands to help separate any flesh away from the sits bones, we can make firm contact with the ground. Knees might be high, they might fall towards the ground, it all depends on where we are with our flexibility. From here we're gonna take hold of our ankles and pull with our arms back in that direction. So pulling the arms back, we're gonna be able to lift the chest forward and up. Maybe we even take a little bend in the elbows, pointing the elbows back behind us. Relax the shoulders down the back. We'll try to find a level chin. It's very common to keep the head a little low or cranked a little high. We'll try to find a nice parallel, lifting from the sternum and the crown of the head. Chest is broad. Jaw is relaxed. We'll try to relax the hips, letting the knees fall towards the ground. We'll spend two more breaths here, breathing deeply.
using this as a posture to not only gain flexibility in the hips, but to gain strength in the back, helping our daily posture to correct for any time we might spend in front of the computers, which really encourages a strong hunch. Let's take one more inhale and an exhale. We'll use hands to help bring the knees up towards the chest. We can scoot our feet forward, kind of adjust on our mats so we can bring ourselves down. Flat on our backs. Take a moment to find that relief, that relaxation, moments for horizontal. We can take the arms out to a T or cactus arms. Both are a great way to open up the shoulders. We're gonna inhale the knees over the hips, shins parallel with the ground. We'll take a nice inhale here. With an exhale, we're gonna drop both legs over to the right. Finding a nice twist through the spine. We'll try to ground either the left shoulder or the knees, but both don't need to be on the ground, just one or the other. We can turn the head, gazing over that left arm, and if we'd like to, we can take the right hand and place it on top of the left thigh. Trying to find a nice relaxation in this pose. Letting go of the tension and stress we might be carrying. Keeping the breath smooth and steady. Let's take one more inhale. Bring the arms back out and exhale, coming back to neutral. Knees over hips, shins parallel with the ground. We'll take a full breath here. And we'll drop both knees over to the left. Easing into our spinal twist, we can take our gaze over the right arm. Maybe we take the left hand on top of the right thigh. Slow, smooth inhales. Complete exhales. We'll fill the lungs once more. And exhale to release. And we can take the left arm back out to the side. Roll the body back up to neutral. We'll drop the soles of the feet to the ground. We can take our arms by our sides. From here, we can prepare for our final relaxation, our Shavasana. We might wiggle the feet out to the width of our mat and let the knees fall against one another. This is a great place to stay if we have any low back discomfort. Or we can slide both legs long towards the corners of our mat, letting the toes fall out to the sides. We can place the palms face down or face up, whatever your preference. We'll start to relax head to toe, feeling fully supported by the ground beneath us. Keeping our focus on our breath. You can stay here for as long as you'd like. Feel free to pause the video, enjoying a relaxation of anywhere from 10, 15, even 20 minutes is great for the body. When you're ready, we can roll onto one side. Curling knees to chest, we'll use the arm for a pillow. And take another few relaxing breaths here. We'll press the palms into the mat to lift the chest. Keeping the head nice and heavy, we'll bring it up last. Thank you so much for following along with this video. Do your best to try it out about three times a week, but be patient with yourself. Flexibility can take a while. And again, the fastest way to make progress is to be consistent with your practice. I'm Katrina Rutman. 
This is Mira Hoffman. And uh, to learn more about me, you can visit my website, katrinaretman.com. And to learn more about our blossoming business, you can visit serenitywellnesstx.com. Favor this video, follow it along, subscribe to Psyche Truth. We've got thousands of health and wellness videos to help you take control. Thanks.